Welcome everyone to the Avanti Nights um, Family Wellbeing Series. We'll just give everyone a few more minutes to come online um, while, they're wait uh, while we're waiting, um, almost hitting 5.30. If you're already signed in or online, um, type away in the comment box, um, in the live chat box to say where you're watching from, um, even your name. I'd love to know where everyone's signing in from. If you have any questions throughout, please do ask during the talk and I'll do my best to answer as we're going along as well. Hello, Sham and Karunika. Thank you for joining and watching. I'm honored to have you guys as viewers. I'm speaking today to you from South London, Crawley. Um, and yeah, do let us know where you guys are watching from. Got some family from South Africa watching, someone from Kent. Thank you guys all so much for joining in. We'll give everyone a few min more minutes and then um, we'll get started. Hi Arti from Hi Wycombe. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. We've got some people from Leicester. Fun fact, I used to call that Leicester when I first moved here. My husband um, gratefully corrected me. It's not Leicester, it's Leicester. Okay, well, everyone's coming online. Welcome to the Avanti Nights um, Family Wellbeing Series. I'm, my name is Neeti, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about gut health, especially according to the viewpoint of Ayurveda. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we had Dr. Chetna Kang, a psychiatrist, talk to you about mental well-being, especially in relationships to um, in relation to family and how we can all have the best mental health and well-being as a family together. So I'm gonna get going. If you have any questions, please do type along um, in the comment box and I can see all of them as they're coming up and I'll try to answer them as best as I can as we go along. So Ayurveda is one of my favorite topics. I'm an Ayurvedic therapist and practitioner. I was born in India, grew up in Australia, and now I'm living in the UK. And I've studied Ayurveda in all three places, um, in India, Australia, and UK. And it's still, uh, it's an ongoing study. You'll never stop learning. So I have my own little clinic in Crawley um, where I do primarily massage, but I've also begun to start uh, consulting um, and not just people in Crawley, but now, especially because of the coronavirus online via Zoom um, and other portals as well. One of my passions in Ayurveda and generally in life as well is food, um, eating as Ayurvedically as we can, but also enjoying how we eat it. And it ties in a lot with one of the central themes of Ayurveda, which is gut health. In Ayurveda, the gut or the digestion is called Agni. 
and it's of utmost importance. They say that um, the key to having a healthy body, mind and soul is having healthy digestion. So before I go on to speak a little bit about gut health, let me introduce Ayurveda to those of you that may not have heard it, about it before. So Ayurveda is one of the oldest medicinal systems in the world. It originated from India over 5,000 years ago, and it's still being practiced today, which is one of the things that I love about it. In India today, you will find um, equal amounts of Ayurvedic hospitals and Western medicine practitioners, um, both treating patients successfully all over the country. And now it's spread beyond the borders of India into many, many countries of the world. And I'm doing my best to translate Ayurveda in a very practical and applicable way. It's a very ancient science. All the texts were written in Sanskrit, but with the help of many doctors, many uh, modern practitioners, it's been translated into English into a way that we can understand. It's a very holistic health. Um, it has a holistic perspective, and it doesn't just look at health from the bodily platform, um, but it looks at body, mind, and soul all in connection with each other. Ayurveda is also a very individual approach to healthcare. So, while you know in the west um we have sort of standard bodies of uh, recommendations or suggestions for large populations or groups of people ayurveda looks at things from a very individual point of view i studied um nutrition and nutrition and media and communication at university and one of the things that really drew me to ayurveda was its simplicity and its focus on the basics its focus on the foundational principles that once you understand these foundational principles of Ayurveda, the three doshas, the five elements, you can actually apply that knowledge to any area in life. Whereas in Western science and Western nutrition, you had to learn a lot of little factors, um, how many grams or milligrams of this vitamin you need, how many grams of this mineral you need. Um, different populations groups would require different amounts. And it was a lot of detail to remember. So with Ayurveda, it was very broad, it was very general and very applicable to everyone. So it's an individual approach. However, they have, the authors of Ayurveda have recognized that there are many patterns that exist naturally around us. And so then according to those patterns, they've categorized three specific groups, which explain not only our body-mind constitution, what, we're, what we are inside of us, but also they explain many concepts in, that we find in nature in the seasons, in foods, in times of day, in stages of life. And these are called the three doshas, which are a reorganization of the five elements. You may have heard of the doshas before, vata, pitta, and kapha. I won't be going into so much detail in this talk today because I want to focus primarily on gut health or digestion. So you've, we've, discuss, we've discussed a little bit about Ayurveda and what its foundational principles are, what are its main um, viewpoints and what it's based on. So as I mentioned before, one of the most important tenets of Ayurveda is to have good digestion, to have good Agni, which is Sanskrit for digestion. And when they talk about digestion in Ayurveda, it doesn't just refer to what you eat, but it also refers to what you take in from all of your senses, what you see, what you hear, what you touch, what you smell, and what you taste. And when we have good functioning digestion, whatever we've taken in from our five senses, it's been broken down properly and our body has been able to, our body has recognized what is nutrients and what the body is going to keep to nourish ourselves, to grow our bodies and what the body needs to eliminate as and get out of the body as waste in one of the three waste products through our urine, our sweat or our stool. Now, when there's any impairment of digestion, this function of being able to categorize what's nutrient and what's waste is impaired. And then what happens is our body tends to either expel nutrients that are needed by the body or accumulate wastes inside our body, manifesting it as toxins and leading to all sorts of health problems. So whenever you go see any Ayurvedic practitioner or doctor, whether you go see them for um, respiratory conditions, for skin conditions, for arthritis, for heart conditions for hormonal health, the first thing that they will always look at is your digestive health. How good is your digestion and how is it functioning? So I wanted to relate this because I'm speaking on behalf of Avanti Nights, which is a large schooling network in um, 
among many other things in England. I wanted to focus this mostly on digestive health for the family, especially children, because if we set up these good foundations for health um, from in children from a young age, it's very easy for them to understand what it means to be in good health and what are the signs of ill health so that they can catch them before they get any worse. So within digestion, if we go back to digestion and if we go back to those three main um, categories that are given in Ayurveda of Vata, Pitta and Kapha, people will naturally tend towards a certain constitution, a certain particular dosha. We're all born with a particular dosha, which is our prakriti, and that's something that we can't change. It's given to us um, by uh, many factors, mostly our parents at the time of conception, pregnancy, and then at birth, we get given our prakriti or our natural constitution. Then because of factors that happen in our life, maybe we've gone through experiences that we haven't processed properly. We've eaten foods that we haven't take, um, if they haven't suited our body well. We then manifest in a state of imbalance and that's called our vikriti. And that happens to 99% of the population. So we will all have certain tendencies because of our prakriti, because of our natural constitution. For some of us, and if we're looking at all of this in the context of digestion, for some of us, we will, for example, tend to feel more hungry than other people. And we will tend to feel hungry at very timely intervals. And when we feel hungry, that's it. We need to eat, nothing else comes in the way. People who have this sort of digestion, it's referred to as a pitta digestion. It's a very fiery and strong digestion. And I like to say that they invented the word hangry, which is a combination of hungry and angry. So you might have children in your family. You might be that person. You might, your spouse or other family members may have this pitta constitution that when they are hungry, they eat, they need to eat now. Nothing else comes in the way. And once they've eaten, then everything's calm and they can make proper decisions again. Then there's another type of digestion, which is called avata digestion, and it's very variable. So remember, we can tend towards any one of these three, and we'll find in our life, we always tend towards one more than the other two. That's just the way our body works. That's our natural constitution. So with avata digestion, one of the qualities that characterizes vata is a very erratic or mobile quality. So sometimes you feel super hungry, but then sometimes you're fine. So with the vata digestion, you might have a child that's hungry, you know, in two minutes and you put things out in front of them. They'll eat two bites of a meal and then that's it. They're full. And then maybe two hours later, they'll come and ask you again, say that, mom, I'm starving. And you put a massive meal in front of them. They'll eat a few bites and then they'll be like, wow, I'm full. So for a child like that, for a person like that, they have a very variable digestion where sometimes they feel super hungry and other times they don't. So that is a vata digestion. The third one is a more kapha digestion. And kapha is characterized by the qualities of earth and water, which are two very heavy elements. And because of this heaviness, a kapha digestion is often slow. It's often sluggish. They don't tend to feel that hunger from deep within them very often. And for, they will tend towards eating just because they like the food, not because they're necessarily hungry from their stomach, not because they necessarily have an appetite. So it's important that you start to recognize these patterns in your family members. That are they a child that you know needs to eat all of the time and will get angry if they don't get food? Are they very variable in their appetite that one time they're super hungry and then another time they're not? Or maybe you have a child that is not really hungry and they can go fine with just two or three meals a day and they don't have to be large meals. Every child is different. Every individual is different. And one of my mentors once told me that actually as babies, we are born with perfect health, right? As babies, when we want to eat, we cry. When we are full, we push our hands away. That That's it. I don't want any more. When we need to pee, we pee. When we need to move our bowels, we do it. We don't wait for any of these urges. We don't wait for anyone to tell us. But then as we grow older, because of, you know, maybe we feel that, oh, my God, my child hasn't eaten the right amount. Public health guidelines are, um, suggest that they should eat this many grams of protein, this many grams of fat, this many grams of vegetable. 
and my child hasn't eaten that much. So I need to feed them more, feed them more, feed them more. But actually the child knows when they're full and they will tell us, no, I'm finished. That's it. And then when they're hungry at a later time, they will let us know by crying or when they get older by saying, mom, I'm hungry. So it's important that we learn to listen to these urges of our body that we were listening to as children, but somehow over time we've forgotten. And we don't eat necessarily when we're hungry, but we eat because, oh, it's a meal time. Or we eat because a delicious meal has been made and it's in front of our eyes and our mouth is salivating, but we don't feel that hunger deep within. So one thing I want to urge you to communicate to everyone in your family is to listen to your hunger, to listen to your gut. Ayurveda has, speaking about, has been speaking about digestive health and gut health for thousands of years. And Western medicine is now starting to follow suit. And you will see a lot of research in magazines, in newspapers, on internet sites about gut health. And they talk about gut instinct. Uh, gut instinct. You know, what's your first reaction? What was your first thought that this is, um, you know, when you see something and you just know in your gut that this is the right thing to do or no, I had a gut feeling that this wasn't the right thing to do, so I didn't do it. It's an unexplained symptom that deep within us, very valid because there are so many nerve endings in the gut that they compare it like a second brain. And it holds a lot of importance, not just in Ayurveda, but this importance is being discovered and being spoken and written about in Western medical science as well. So don't ignore that gut instinct. Go, don't ignore that gut health. Always listen to it and honor it. Now, with children or with even adults for that matter, when we feel that there's an impairment of our digestion, and, and I'll explain how this can happen, we should address it at that point. Because when there's any um, impairment or improper functioning of our digestive fire, that can snowball, it can become an even worse situation, and it can lead to many health conditions later on in life. It can lead to common coughs, colds, uh, skin conditions, respiratory conditions. So if we're able to recognize the signs and symptoms of digestive imbalance when they arise, we can stop it from getting any worse and we can stop it from progressing into other illnesses that could be avoided. So what are the signs and symptoms of good digestion? Let's cover good digestion first so we know what we're looking for. When we have good digestion, we move our bowels at least once a day. And this is another thing that I wanted to touch about. Make it okay Make it comfortable for you to talk to your children, to your family members about your bowel movements. Now, I know some of my family members might be watching and they'll laugh because they know that that's what I love talking about a lot of the time. And they'll be like, Neeti, not now. You know, we're eating or we're doing something like this. Um, we're, we're doing something else. We don't want to talk about bowel movements right now. But get into a habit of having this conversation with your children in a healthy and mature way of just asking them about their bowel movements, whether they passed every day, what was it like? Get them to recognize what is a healthy bowel movement. So a healthy bowel movement, they should pass at least once a day. Ideally in the morning and before having breakfast. Upon waking, um, it should take between half an hour to an hour for anyone, child or adult, to then naturally move your bowels. Some people may have more, maybe two to three bowel movements a day, one to three is gold standard. That's what you want to achieve. They should be, they should pass easily without too much effort. Um, they should, there's varying literature where they, they should float or sink, but they should definitely not stick anywhere. There shouldn't be any stickiness involved. Um, sort of a brownish color and just an earthy smell. Hopefully none of you are watching this while eating dinner, but I want to emphasize please make it comfortable and okay for you to talk about bowel movements with adults and children alike. So that's one of the first signs of healthy digestion is having daily bowel movements. The second sign is you feel satisfied after eating. You feel satisfied, you feel full of energy and you have a clear mind. Oftentimes when we eat something, especially if it's something that we really enjoy eating, one of our favorite meals, we can tend to overeat and feel stuffed afterwards, feel very foggy headed, feel over full and often lethargic. This shouldn't be the norm all of the time. 
after you eat, full of energy, clear mind, and satisfied. Your meal should take a couple of hours to digest, depending on what you've eaten. And um, there are other signs of good digestion as well, like lack of coating on your tongue, but we'll go through them as well. But the main thing I want you guys to look out for in your family's health, in your health, in your children's health, is moving your bowels at least every day and feeling clear-minded, um, full of energy and satisfied after every meal. So when you have digestive imbalance, how does that manifest in the body? Digestive imbalance manifests not moving your bowels once a day. Maybe you move four or more times a day and that's a cause of imbalance or disturbance in your digestive system. Maybe you don't go every day, you go once every second day, once every third day. The number of people who pass constipation off as not a big deal is alarming. And when you just sort of brush aside constipation that it's not that big a deal, um, it can then snowball and worsen into much serious conditions. So it's really important that you nip it in the bud and the moment, um, and you make it, you know, healthy and comfortable to talk about with your children that they report back to you that like, mom, I haven't gone today or I don't feel so good. And you can nip the problem in the bud and correct it um, before it gets any worse. Another sign of imbalance is a coating on your tongue. So it's natural to have a thin film of white coating um, on your tongue every day. But if there is an excess of coating, that's another indication that there is a digestive upset or imbalance in your body. Now, if your tongue is wet, slimy, mucousy, or covered with an excessively thick coating, it leads to congestion in the digestion. So you tend to have that cover digestion, that digestion that's a little bit heavy, that's a little bit um, sluggish and slow to move. If your tongue or if your child's tongue is dry, cracked, and your dry, a child is always thirsty, this leads to or this indicates that there's dehydration, they've got dry intestines and possible constipation. And if your tongue or their tongue is bright red or even purplish in color, that indicates a lot of heat or acidity in the digestion and this can manifest as loose stool. So maybe make it a daily practice to um, look at your child's tongue just to check every day whether their digestion is functioning normally. And if you come from an Asian or Indian background, you will know that we've been taught from a young age to always scrape our tongue every day. And this is a practice that you should do every single day. It's just as important as brushing your teeth and continue well into your adult life. So when you wake up in the morning and you have that white coating on your tongue, that's very natural. That's all of the toxins that have accumulated while you were sleeping overnight and they've manifested on your tongue. So when you scrape your tongue, moving from the back of your mouth to the tip of your tongue at the front, that is slowly getting rid of all of those accumulated toxins. And then you can rinse your tongue scraper under the, um, under the tap, under the water. So scraping your tongue is a very, very important practice at keeping a healthy and um, well-functioning digestion. So I urge you, if you're already doing it, great, keep doing it. Spread the word around. If you're not doing it or you've fallen out of habit or practice, get back into it. It's one of the easiest ways that we can maintain good gut health. Another way, especially in children, that we can detect imbalances in the digestive system is through stress. Now, we think that stress is sort of an adult affliction. In our busy days, in our busy lives with all of this work, we think that stress is something that only affects adults. But actually, Children are just as susceptible to stress, if not more. It's just that their stresses are a little bit different. Maybe they're stressed about wondering who they're going to sit next to at lunch, who they're going to walk to school or back home with. They have all of these little stresses that may not seem like a big deal to us, but in their young minds, it's made into a really big deal. So it's important you have constant communication and a healthy relationship with your child that you're able to then pick up actually, you know, they're not going through something right. Then they don't seem their usual selves. And often when a child is under stress, even when an adult is under stress, the digestive system is the first place that it will manifest. So just like in our digestive systems, we can tend towards one sort of pattern or the other 
you know, sometimes will tend towards um, being that hot, fiery digest digestion, like the pitta types who are always hungry. Sometimes we will tend towards that really variable um, digestion, digestive type that we're sometimes hungry, sometimes not. And sometimes we will tend towards that sluggish or slow digestion, like the kapha types. In the same way, our body and minds are wired naturally from birth to react in a certain way. So you'll have, if you have multiple children, you may notice that they're quite different from each other. And that's because of their natural prakriti or their natural doshic constitution. Now, if your child is vata and maybe has a vata digestion, they will not always voice their stress. They may not tell you. This goes the same with adults as well. They tend to sort of keep things to themselves and not be quick to share. And as an adult, as a parent, um, it's really important that we're able to recognize that something's not right with our child. They don't seem their usual self. And we notice this in children a lot more than we'll notice this in adults or we'll notice this in ourselves. And actually that feeling of something's not right, that we can't put our finger on what it is, it's very key in Ayurvedic health. Because if we can recognize what it is that's not right and if we can fix the problem at that time, we stop ourselves, we stop our bodies from progressing further into disease. So for some children, they may resort by introverting and um, going in towards their shell a little bit more, not really communicating with us and just kind of switching off. Other children may resort with a little bit of anger and, you know, get upset really quickly, get irritable more than often. And that's how you'll notice, okay, something's not right. For other children, um, they may just sort of sweep things under the carpet. They don't want to really talk about it a little bit like the Vata types. Um, and, Maybe they'll eat as a coping mechanism, overeat a little bit more and be overly emotional in response to a stress in their life. So the minute you feel like something is not right, that phrase that I can't quite put my finger on it, something's not right in my body, in my mind, ask yourself what it is. Ask your child what happened. Did something happen at school? Did something happen at home? Let's talk about it. When and, and then... When you correct it at that point, you can stop it from then going to the digestive system and then stop it from spreading anywhere else around the body. So having a healthy digestion. Now, we talked about the three different types of digestive systems, um, and I'm going to give you a few tips on what you can do to bring yourself back into balance if you feel like your digestion has gone one of those three ways. So... If we take the example of someone who's got a very hot and fiery digestion, they have an excessively, excessively red or even purplish colored tongue, um, a lot of heat or acidity in their body, they're complaining that mom, I'm feeling too hot. Maybe they have really loose um, stools. They can um, frequent with diarrhea. Maybe they even vomit. Sometimes for some um, conditions, a sign of vomiting is actually good. You're getting all of the toxicity out of your body. Obviously, not if this isn't something that ha should happen too often, then it's definitely time to go see a doctor. But if you find your, your child is vomiting as a result to intense headaches or tummy ache, it's something that their tummies, it's, it's an indication that their digestion is not right. So children with a lot of heat in their body that tend towards diarrhea, um, acidity, they could even be the ones that break out more often than not in skin conditions like eczema, heat rash, um, teenage acne. For them, it's important to bring a lot of cooling elements into their diet. And one way that you can do this is by giving them on a daily basis a cooling fennel and coriander tea. So taking equal parts, about a teaspoon of fennel and a teaspoon of coriander, either in powdered form or in seed form, boiling it in 1.5 liters of water for a good five to 10 minutes and letting it reduce and then straining the seeds or the powder out and giving this to your, to your child or to yourself or to a family member to drink throughout the day. Now with Ayurveda, it works when you practice it on a daily basis, when it's a regular part of your life. Ayurveda is not just a band-aid approach to what you're feeling, it's a lifestyle medicine. Literally, Ayurveda means the science of life. So a fennel and coriander tea is great for when you're feeling a lot of heat in your body um, and having this on a daily basis. 
If you don't prefer to drink it hot, that's fine. You can let it cool to room temperature. For children, even mix a little bit of honey in it and sip it, you know, between meals, um, a little bit with their meal. Try not to drink too much during the meal um, and or after, straight after the meal. If your child tends to go towards dehydration, if their tongue is very dry and cracked and they're always thirsty, and they have dry intestines, and this is indicated by constipation. They find it really difficult to move their bowels. Increase a lot more cooked and warm foods into their diet. Um, a very simple and effective home remedy for children for constipation um, is thrifla in the evenings. Uh, many of you may have thrifla at home, or you can easily get it from health food stores or even Amazon. Um, whether in capsule or powdered form, capsule is obviously a little bit easier to take because it doesn't taste that strong, but powdered form is also very effective. Giving your children about um, half a cup of water with a half a teaspoon of thrifla um, steeped in it for about 10 minutes. Another option to smooth out um, children's bowels and to sort of regularize constipation and they're not, sorry, to eliminate constipation and regularize bowel movements is a teaspoon of ghee and a glass of warm water at bedtime as well. This really helps to um, eliminate that constipation and get them regular with their bowel movements. Another simple thing which helps to bring intimacy and love into your relationship with your children is massage. And especially with anyone that has a vata or very dry digestion, a simple abdominal massage a couple of times a week. It'll only take five minutes. Get some sesame oil or coconut oil and you can warm it in a um, cup of hot water and massage your um, child's digestion, even for another family member, always in a clockwise direction, applying just slight firm pressure to help relieve any pain or just get gas moving out of the body. Um, and you always go clockwise because that's the direction of your colon. That's the direction that um, gases and waste move up, move out of the body. So abdominal massage is a great way to get rid of that very airy and uh, vata type digestion. For someone who has more mucus on their tongue, a very heavy and thick coating, and they tend towards a very sluggish digestion, you'll notice that they might be eating just big, they, they really love food. Any kapha child, any kapha person really loves food. They love eating, but they don't necessarily need it the most. Um, with their types of digestion, they might have very slow moving bowels. Maybe they do go once a day, but maybe it's later on in the day. They don't have a bowel movement till later on in the day. And they're the ones that maybe spend a little bit longer on the toilet because it takes longer in coming out. So for children like that, it's very important that we introduce some elements to break up that mucus, to break up that heaviness and sluggishness in their bowels. Um, a few more bitter and spicy herbs and foods into their diet, adding a little bit more black pepper into their meals. Um, you can get a formula of trikatu, which is equal portions of dry ginger powder, um, long black pepper, I'm sorry, long pepper and black pepper, and the three, these three powdered, and you can um, mix this with a little bit of honey and administer it to your children. When they have that really sluggish digestion and you find their bowels are really slow to move. Another great thing for children with a very um, sluggish digestion or anyone, adults even, is exercise, getting them moving. Because of that really heavy earthy and watery quality, to counteract that, it's important to get energy, activity, movement, stimulation into their lives. So encourage them to do a little bit more cardio exercise. I know the Avanti schools are doing um, yoga, I think a couple of times a week, every day on their page at 10.30 UK time. So this is something you can do as a family. Um, everyone do it together and it just makes it more fun. Get your children moving throughout the day as well. So they are some ways in which you can counteract the three different digestive types um, and bring them back to normality, bring them back to regularity, not just in children, but also in adults. And just, you know, to leave you as well on a few tips of Dr. John Dulard, who is a Ayurvedic and Western medicine doctor, has written a few many books, and he calls this the code of digestive intelligence. And he says, 
not just him, but the Ayurvedic texts speak about this, that when we eat, we should eat in a settled atmosphere with no screens in front of us, not watching the TV, um, not doing anything else. When we sit down to eat, that's all we should be doing. The other thing is we should sit down to eat, not standing up, um, whether it's on the floor, on the table, um, encourage everyone that you're eating with it, please sit down. You know, sometimes we have a habit when we're at social gatherings or in groups of large people, we just try, like to stand up and eat and talk to other people. But make it a culture, make it a habit with your family, start your children off um, young with these habits and then they will last a lifetime. Eat only when you're hungry. This is a little bit hard for us sometimes because we have an abundance of food all around us, not just in our houses, but also when we go out to eat, there's snacks available on demand. And a lot of the times we eat just because the snack is there. We see that chocolate, we see those biscuits, and our mind is already conjuring up, oh my God, it's there in front of me, I'm feeling hungry. But actually, we don't feel that hunger from deep within our stomach, it's in the mind, it's also on the tongue. So whenever you sit down to eat, ask yourself, are you hungry? And sometimes, you know, we think, oh, my child didn't eat what I made today, or they didn't do this, or this. but be patient. When they're hungry at a later time, they can always come back and eat that. So encourage everyone in your family to really um, eat when they feel a hunger or appetite deep within their stomach. Favor freshly prepared food, things that you've made at home, because the nutrition of food is not just in what you eat, it's also in how that food is cooked. So when you're cooking for your family, you're cooking with love, you're cooking with the right intention to heal, um, you know, try to favor freshly home cooked foods. Avoid ice cold food and drinks, especially in the winter time. I know in the summertime when the really hot days and we feel like getting going for that ice cream. During those times, go for that ice cream. Go for it during lunch time um, when the sun and our digestion is at its strongest point because our body will be able to break it down. But because you've had that little bit of extra cream, that extra heaviness in your diet, counteract it maybe by later in the day you can have some trika too a little bit of that powder of equal parts of ginger powder black pepper powder and long pepper mixed with honey just because you know you've had something heavy it's like atoning for the indulgence that you're about to um have avoiding ice cold drinks as well um trying to drink warm or room temperature fluids all of the time eating at a moderate moderate pace you know, we'll all know people or even children that scoff their foods down really fast or some that uh, are quite slow and, you know, take their time, but try to eat at a moderate um, pace and try to make lunch the biggest meal of the day. Since many of us um, in England, around the world, we're in lockdown at the moment where everyone's at home. This is an excellent time to put this into practice. Make lunch the biggest meal of your day because that is when our digestive fire is strongest because our digestive fire, it moves with the strength of the sun. So use nature cycles to your advantage and eat your um, biggest meal at lunchtime. Get into this practice now when everyone's at home, the whole family's at home and then have a lighter dinner um, for everyone because you'll sleep better, you'll wake up feeling more refreshed and with more energy. So these are just a few of the thoughts that I wanted to share, but I see a few questions coming in. So I'm just going to go through and answer as many as I can. Um, if you have any, please do type them in. Um, someone asked, what is good for bloating? So bloating means there's a lot of air in the body. And in one of the principles of Ayurveda that I really love and resonate with is that like increases like. So when we think of this airy quality, let's also think of this airy quality in foods. Foods that have excessive amounts of air that are very dry, um, things like crisps or chips, um, hard biscuits or crackers, salads, um, what else, popcorn, all of these things are very airy. They're not very earthy or grounding or heavy. So to counteract bloating, introduce more cooked, more warm, more heavy foods into your diet. Um, use spices like cumin and ajwain in, more in your cooking, more than you normally would. You know, you can sort of hide these spices in creative ways so your kids um, don't find out. You can put some ajwain seeds into your rotis, into the dough when you make them. Um, you can even make like an ajwain tea at night and, you know, pass it around to everyone to drink. 
when your children, when you sort of give your children something and say, here, you need to take this, it kind of makes them a little bit less likely to um, accept this practice. But when you do it as a family and say like, like this is something that we're going to do every evening, a couple of times a week, this is our special um, tea and you can give it a special name and just, you know, boil some ajwain seeds in um, a big pot of water for a couple of minutes, let it brew nicely, strain them out and then pour it into cups and give them to everyone in the family to drink. Um, also, abdominal massage is very good for bloating as well. Um, what is good food for children with eczema? So eczema is as a result of a lot of heat in the body. So for starters, for children um, who may have eczema, it's really important to cut down on these hot foods. Um, take away um, red chilies, tomatoes. They're very acidic and heating to the body. Eggplants, um, even capsicums, and too many fried or fermented foods. And favor lots of cooling foods, um, fresh herbs like coriander, basil, um, rose, coconut, you can sort of try coconut milk, coconut oil in your cooking, um, coconut oil on their body as well instead as a moisturizer, that can be an effective remedy for eczema um, also. Now, all of these remedies that I'm giving you, um, they're very blanket and general. As I mentioned at the beginning, everyone is individual. So your causative factors, the reasons why you develop those imbalances will be individual. And Ayurveda looks at addressing the root cause, not just at the symptoms. And so if your root cause is different to the person next to you, it's important that you try and figure out what's your root cause and work on that. And you can do that with the help of an Ayurvedic practitioner or doctor. Uh, Divyangana says, I guess we should go empty. I, I guess we should go empty your bowels when you need to, but I'm not keen on kids using public toilets. When I train kids to hold it, especially for those irregular, not once a day kids. I would recommend not training kids to hold it because we do that anyway as adults. Um, you know, we don't go to the bowels because we don't move our bowels because we're running late or we'll miss the bus or we'll miss the train or we're in a meeting. Encourage your children to move their bowels wherever you are. Um, if you're in a public place, public toilets, clean it down. Always carry wipes with you. Um, you know, maybe try and go to a restaurant or a another office, but try and get your kids into a habit of going when they need to and not holding it in. I can't stress that enough. And if you use this time, especially since we're in lockdown and we can't really go out anywhere, um, encourage them, get them into a routine of hopefully trying to get that, move their bowels first thing every morning. And if that means for a couple of weeks, you need to use some di digestive aids like ghee in water at bedtime, maybe a little bit of thrifala, um, and again, every child is different. Different. You might have two children of similar ages, but you know, one cup of trifla is too much for a child, and for another child, it does nothing. So, view each child as individual. What works for one might not work for the other. Um, please suggest how to deal for burps and flatulence in children. Okay, burps and flatulence—they are normal. It is normal to burp. It is normal to fart. What? Your farts shouldn't be as they shouldn't be smelly. When they are overly smelly, it's a sign of poor digestion and something's wrong in the stomach. So look at their gut, ask them how many times they're moving their bowels um, during the day, if they're moving them at all. Ask them how they feel when they move their bowels. And um, this is a question I asked to many of my clients that once you move your bowels, do you feel um, empty or do you feel still like you need to get rid of stuff? Um, flatulent uh, sorry burps it's normal to burp they shouldn't again smell um so these smelly burps and farts are a sign of poor digestion which category do you fall into if you're prone to gassiness and um, that is definitely a vata type of digestion a lot of air in the body um what to do with gas problem with four-year-old my son starts coughing when he gets gas um many of the tips that i've shared before abdominal massage i'm adding a little bit of um ajwain seeds even an extra bit of asafoetida or hing into their food can help to eliminate um, the gas in their diet as well please share examples of light dinners now light dinners they're more um applicable towards adults because children they tend to have stronger digestion than adults but 
you know, if your child is still hungry, obviously don't deny them, offer them something heavier. Examples of light um, dinners, instead of having rice and dal, have quinoa and dal. Um, you know, try for protein and vegetable-based meals. You can do chickpea flour pudlas. You can do uh, mung dal pudlas. You can do um, soups. Um, it's a little bit warmer now, so maybe you want to do like a cooked salad, you know, maybe with some salad leaves, roasted beetroot, um, sweet potato, a few nuts, um, salad dressing. Um, what else can you do? Sort of gluten-free wraps filled with some veggies. Maybe even eating light means eating less than what you normally would. Um, so look at portion sizes as well. Can I take Ayurvedic medications such as Trifla alongside Western medications for Crohn's disease, e.g. as a theoprine? Um, I would always consult your doctor if you're on specific Western medication, as this may interfere with the um, functioning of your medication. So any Ayurvedic medication actually should be taken under the advice and suggestion of an Ayurvedic doctor or practitioner, because as we're all individual, medicines will work on us differently as well. For some people, Trifla doesn't do anything and they are better off having ghee in hot water. It all depends on the person. So if you're on current uh, medication from your GP, please consult them before you start taking any Ayurvedic medication or herbs. Um, is there any special diet for IBS? Um, oh, sorry, I missed a question. I have a hernia in the stomach and tend to get a lot of chest and back pains due to gas that occurs due to it. What could I do to help? Um, unfortunately, hernias just go away on their own in a natural way. Uh, make sure eating lots of easy to digest foods like um, kichdis or soups, dals, um, cooked vegetables, nothing too heavy or hard or dry like crackers. Um, too much processed bread or biscuits, crisps, um, fried foods. Um, so just trying to keep to a really easy, soft and light diet. Any special diet for IBS? Again, it's dependent on the individual. Um, irritable bowel syndrome is a case of alternating diarrhea and constipation. And the reason that someone presented with it is very different to another person. So to treat the same condition in two people could be very, very different. So unfortunately, I can't give blanket advice um, to specific health concerns or questions. But if you have something more general, um, then I, I'm, I'll be happy to answer it. Same thing for Crohn's disease. Um, so a lot of these questions to require um, an individual consultation with a little bit more understanding of the person, the individual, um, and what their current lifestyle and diet is like. How to get um, B12 and iron with veg diet and probiotics benefits, please. So Ayurvedic nutrition doesn't necessarily look at supplements and vitamins and minerals. An Ayurvedic, a complete Ayurvedic meal and complete Ayurvedic nutrition looks at getting the six tastes in your diet on a daily basis. Now those six tastes are sweet, salty, sour, bitter, pungent, and astringent. For most of us um, all over the world, we do really well in getting the sweet, salty, and sour tastes into our diet. Um, we don't need to increase that in, uh, in any way, shape, or form. The ones we have difficulty incorporating is the bitter, pungent, and astringent. So it's in, I'm not going to comment on how to get particular vitamins and nutrients into your diet because that's not under the remit of Ayurveda but focusing just on um, uh, the, the six tastes because that is, um, that, that's, you know, the foundations of Ayurvedic nutrition. Can sluggish digestion affect dental hygiene? My child is prone to get smelly breath and a lot of pluck despite of controlling the junk food and sweets. Any suggestions, please? Um, so sluggish di digestion, so smelly breath, is a indication of sluggish digestion. So again, it's very difficult for me to give suggestions without understanding the child, um, who they are, their mind body type. And um, yeah, uh, more information about their personal and medical history. 
um, to, to then offer suggestions. If any of you guys want a one-in-one -in -one consultation, um, I'm going to pass on my details to the Avanti Schools um, Trust and also so at the bottom of this video in the descriptions, you should be able to see my Instagram handle. If you contact me through there, um, I can get in touch with you. And for a lot of these questions that are about just your specific children or yourselves, um, about personal health issues that you've got, I'll be able to answer them more on a one-on-one -on -one basis because I get a thorough understanding of your diet, your lifestyle, your personal and medical history, and can then advise accordingly. Um, any other questions that are not personal medical questions? Um, yes. Can you suggest any foods for vata dosha, please? So anyone who is very, um, the you know, of that airy element, um, thin body frame, variable digestion, tends towards constipation, gas, anything that is good for vata is always cooked foods, um, warm in temperature, well spiced um, be generous with your spicing because this increases the digestibility of your foods using adequate amounts of healthy fats and oils in your diet um uh, healthy oils like ghee coconut oil sesame oil even nuts and avocado seeds um warm fluids throughout the day um yeah th these are the types of foods that are really good for Vata dosha. For pitta dosha, you want to focus on um, anything that is cooling, nothing too spicy, fried, or fermented. Um, uh, coconut, coconut milk. Um, sorry, I had a bit of a mind blank. Fresh herbs like coriander, mint, basil. Um, pitta dosha also has that light element, so you want to have sort of um the heavier foods main thing in pitta dosha is to avoid too many chilies fried and fermented foods as these can tend to cause a lot of complications ayurvedic way of eating a pizza enjoy it eat it at lunchtime um don't eat it for dinner um have something bitter to drink in the evening any good memory boosting foods to help kids learn better Brahmi is a good powder, but again, it's different in the way you give it to different children. Um, also understanding that some children will have better memory capacity than others um, and, and accepting that and embracing that. Anything with foods, um, it's important that when you eat food, food, I've done a video in the past on, you know, what is Ayurvedic food we always look for? Is this vata? Is this good for pitta? Is this good for kapha? Any food which, like I explained it before, is good to your digestion, makes you feel clear-headed, um, a clear mind, lots of energy and satisfied, that's been cooked with love, that is um, as fresh as possible, that is right context, is Ayurvedic food. What suits you? What makes you happy? Um, and for kapha diet, anything light, um, lots of... So lots of spices, again, as with the Vata diet, not too many potatoes, rice, um, flour, processed foods, cheese or dairy for kapha, sort of staying away from that, increasing the amount of uh, vegetables, bitter foods, um, dals, proteins and things like that. So I've got a few other questions that are not really related to um, the gut health, which is what I'm talking about today. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to answer them. Any other questions you have, please, um, you can see my Instagram handle at the bottom. Please do follow me on Instagram. I do my best to do practical and daily Ayurvedic tips. Again, I'm going to stress if you have personal medical questions, um, it might be something that needs an in-depth consultation, and you can also contact me for that. But I've hope, I hope I've sort of passed along some information that can help you, that can help your children and families have good digestive health from the onset of their lives so they can continue on um, in adulthood. So just to do a little bit of a recap, understand that each of your children, each of your family members will have slightly different digestion and they will tend towards slightly um, 
different symptoms or signs when they start to go imbalanced. Also understand the signs of good digestion, moving your bowels every day, especially in the morning before breakfast, and making this a healthy habit with your children, making it a comfortable thing to talk about. Um, looking at their tongue in the morning every couple of days, once a week, make it a you know a fun family affair. There's the tongue analysis is actually one of the tools used by many Ayurvedic physicians and practitioners to assess a person's health. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of science behind that as well. So just quickly check your child's tongue to see whether there's a, there's a coating, excessive coating on it or not, and whether it's super dry or red, and then you can get an indication of the digestive system. Look at this, the stress in their life. Ask them questions. Make sure you're eating in a comfortable environment, um, encouraging them to eat when they're healthy, uh, sorry, hungry. Um, and yeah, just inculcating them with good digestive health, being aware of it and how important it is and um, encouraging them to communicate with you when something doesn't feel right so you can correct it at a very early stage and stop it from blowing out into something greater that's more difficult to manage. So thank you very much. I hope you've definitely learned something. The video is going to be saved on the Avanti Schools Trust YouTube channel. And please follow them along a couple of days a week when they do yoga in the morning at 10.30 a.m. UK time. Um, it can be a family affair. So thank you again. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Um, stay healthy. Have a healthy gut. And um, enjoy the rest of your evening or day and your weekend to come.